welcome, welcome this morning to Covenant Fusion Church Sunday service here at Castleberry. It's a blessing to be in the house of the Lord. So glad that you can join us tonight. Today, He is worthy to be praised. His presence was strong and mighty here this morning. I hope that you felt His presence also because He is real. He's alive. Our God's not Amen. dead. He's a real God. Amen. And we thank Him. We thank Him for His presence today. If you have any prayer requests, please send them to 407 490 4019. Again, the number is 407 490 4019. We'd love to pray for you. The word says we're two or more gathered in His name, that He is in the midst of us. So send in those prayer requests. And we would like to declare Psalm 91, powerful declaration, powerful scripture. Amen. We are always under the shadow of the Almighty. So let's declare that together with boldness. So let's begin. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say to the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, my God, in Him I will trust. And surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the flower and from the palace pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day nor the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste in the day. A thousand may hold your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. And no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. But he shall give his angels charge over you, to keep you in all your ways, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And now Pastor Warren is going to receive our tithes and offerings. Pastor Warren. Amen, amen. Boy, that was awesome worship. I don't know about you. I'm just glad if I just showed up for that, I could leave here and really have changed my life. Mm -hmm. There's something about when you praise God, when you give Him something out of your mouth, instead of back talk and be a good child. Give Him some praise and worship. Isn't it amazing if your dad and mom here today, if you gave them some love and caring and you say kind things to them, what they'll do for you? Imagine what your Heavenly Father will do. Amen. He has all power. He has all control. He owns everything. What a blessing He could be in your life when we allow Him to be. So I'm excited today. If you're ready to give your tithes and offerings, uh, covenantfusion.com. Go to the Give button. Thank you in advance. I always say this because there are people that are always ahead of the curve. and 99% are always trying to catch up and when it's too late and they're already left behind. Amen. Amen. But I, I'm so excited. You know, I wore this shirt. It says, listen, it says, change hearts. Mm -hmm. Cha change your mind. Change your life. See, it's always a heart issue. And I wear things like this to remind me when I go through my day because mm -hmm. I'm like you, no different. We go through struggles. And this world is full of them. And especially today, a lot of people, their finances are being attacked. But when God can change your heart in an area, especially in the finances, because I, I know what it's like to go without, and I know what it's like to have abundance. When He can get your heart, here's what you'll freely do. You release it. I told you at the beginning of the service, it's about His Word. And I actually mentioned this. He said He'll open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing you can't contain. Yeah, the problem is you and I have a heart issue, and we don't listen. We do. <laughs> If you're willing to admit it, the truth will set you free. It's the beginning for any ad addict in any area of their lives. You have to admit that you have the problem. Most people think they know better than God, know better than their bosses, know better than their parents. But today I'm willing to tell you this truthfully. You don't know better than God. You don't know nothing compared to God. Matter of fact, we look pretty stupid compared to God. Even though we're made in His image, we seem to always run left when He tells us to run, run, run right. Malachi 3 says to bring the whole time. So... That's up to you, ladies and gentlemen. I've decided to give him what he said to give him. So what happened to me and my wife and my household? We live in the blessing, not outside of it. We don't live in a curse. Amen. Curses Amen. are not for Christians. Amen. If you're in a curse, then you better check yourself. Paul says to check and see if you're really in the faith. That doesn't mean you don't believe in God, but are you really truly listening to what your father's telling you to do? Is what he's saying. He was trying to be politically correct over 2,000 years ago. Aren't we still doing that today? 
Amen. Well, it's okay. If that's what it takes, I always say this with my own family, my own kids. Lord, whatever it takes, whatever it takes, Lord, just don't kill him. You, that's what you did for Job. I believe you do it for me and my family. Amen. The enemy could do whatever he wants, but he couldn't kill him. Whatever it takes to get you on the right course and the right path, and especially today, I'm going to pray for you that whatever's going on in your finances, that you'll have the right heart. Amen. That you'll open up your hand and release. Not begrudgingly, not under compulsion, because God loves a cheerful giver. So today, if we learn to be cheerful, guess what? You'll be walking with God hand in hand instead of him always trying to push you in the right direction. So I'm going to pray for you as, as we're ready to give. Father, we thank you for the blessing plan. We bless you, Lord, because you, you are truthful, Father, that whatever you say, that heaven and earth will pass away, but your word will never, ever pass away. It will never come back void. I believe that as we say it right now and as we pray, Father, that for, for those who have a right heart, that they had a renewing of their mind, that their lives are being changed right now, Father. That in their area of finances, we're praying right now for that, Lord, because we're giving back what you've only given us to be stewards of, Father. You ask for whatever it is, whether it's 10% or if you ask for the whole thing, I'm willing to give today, Father, because my heart's right. I pray, Father, that I, I will be obedient and the people listening to you will be obedient to your word. Not to our feelings, not to our flesh, not to my brother or my sister around me, but to you. Because your answer is the only true answer I need, Father. So as we sow into, uh, into your kingdom, which is good soil, Father, that you said you will open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing we can't contain. Father, whatever that looks like in people's lives, Lord, that as they give right now, if they're, they're lacking a job, they're going to give. They're giving out of the lack, not their abundance, Father, but your abundance is coming into their life. For those who have more than enough, Father, and they're, they're obedient, may you give them everything their heart desires. Because it's not just about things. It's about what we love, Lord, and you're a good Father. You want to give us what we desire, Lord. That we take our eyes off ourselves today and think about people that don't know you. Father, sowing into the church is the best soil, Father, because we can reach people and tell the good news about what you did. You made a way where there was no way, Father, and I'm believing right now for those who are in need in financial circumstances as they're obedient, you're doing the same thing. You're making a way where there is no way. I pray, Father, for business people, but I'm a business owner, and I pray, Father, for not, not just me, but for everybody that owns a business, that, that supports families, that supports their community, Father, that, that things will just miraculously turn around. Where the doors seem to be closed, they're opening, Father. Where people didn't know you were there, word of mouth is spreading through the communities, through the airwaves, through the internet, that the businesses are there because your hand is upon them. These businesses are inside a blessing. There's a hedge of protection around them that the enemy cannot shut the doors and shut them and make them go out of business. That, that the families that are working for these businesses will be able to get raises and not cutbacks because the, ob the obedience of the owners of those businesses are looking up towards heaven where the true answers come from. And they are not selfish or stingy with their finances. Father, I'm th so thankful for the blessing in our lives and the blessing in this church. May you continue your blessing plan in each and every one of us as we hear your word today, Father. And I believe right now the windows of heaven are open in your life as you are listening to the word of God in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Well, if you gave, thank you so much. Continue giving. You can now give God, ladies and gentlemen, spiritually, physically, financially, relationally, emotionally, wherever you're hurting, wherever you have a need, go sow. And watch what God will do in your life. I'm excited to hear the word today as Pastor Sri gets ready to come up and give the word. you still got time. Tell somebody to turn, uh, turn us on. Get in front of us today. I guarantee you their circumstances will be changed in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you. Talk to you soon. Here we go. Get ready. Sit back. The message is coming. Amen. 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 God is good. Amen. Amen. He is a wonderful God and faithful God that makes sure we are in the right place. Amen? God always puts us in the right place when we can follow Him. Sometimes we don't like the right place. You know, we have a wrong understanding of God's plan, right? Uh, last night, um, we were watching an old... Uh, classic uh, uh, movie, if you ever watched it or not, it's called Kowaris. Uh It's a, it's a Christian uh, story, but predominantly you will see how the, uh, the Roman Catholic Church started. It began on some, some the early church, how it uh, started in Rome. It, it all, it all uh, pertains uh, to that. 
uh, a kind of like uh, a story that is very very interesting it's not just purely biblical but you will see the Bible characters in there Paul doing his ministry and then Peter coming there and one of the things that really fascinated me in that is the Lord gives the instruction in that in that process when it is happening Peter to go back to the go back to Rome he was actually trying to go away from Rome he's out of it he's out of all the chaos because this is when Nero was uh, killing all Christians left and right this is when he was uh, 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 murdering them and this is the time where Peter is walking away but the Lord tells him to go back to Rome where he will be crucified he will be crucified actually upside down he chooses not to be crucified the same way his Lord was so he chooses to be crucified upside down that kind of even ignited me again uh, to thinking uh, imagine the guts Peter should have there imagine the heart that Pe Peter has to have for him knowing that the Lord is wanting me go to go back into this trouble, into this struggle where my death is guaranteed. Mm. And him making the decision and goes back. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. Many a times we think uh, right, uh, right place uh, is a place of prosperity, which it is, which it is. Because God guarantees that for us because he wants us to be in the right place though that we may prosper. But again, prosperity is not always, you know, we always misunderstand prosperity to materialistic stuff alone. Though materialistic stuff is part of prosperity, but that is not the prosperity. Amen. Prosperity, the true prosperity is the growth in the kingdom of God. Growing in the kingdom of God, Amen. whether it is spiritual, mental, physical, financial, relational, it doesn't matter. All of it falls under prosperity when it comes to the kingdom of God. So what, what was he doing? Even while he was dying, he is prospering. You know, when we see death, we think, man, that is, that is awful. That is awful. We see that from a dimension that we think, man, this is... This is, this is awful. But at the same time, God sees that in a totally different dimension. You know, uh, 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 last week we had a, 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 an opportunity as a fa family to go to the beach. And um, last week, if you remember it, I preached on the Rainbow Covenant, a reminder to all of us how uh, God is faithful into our lives. In the last few weeks, we have been going through a lot of rough time as a family, as individual, as a church. We have been going through a lot of rough time. And in that, when God was talking about his faithfulness, so I walk, I get checked in, and then we're like, okay, beach is right there, so let us go walk in. So I walk in. Uh, uh, Jonathan, do the slide, please. So I walk in. That is exactly what I walk into. The full rainbow right in front of me. Mm, hallelujah. I walk into it and here it is. So I never ask, I never ask my wife to take pictures while I pose. This is probably the first that I have ever asked, take a picture. Because I need to see and have that covenant connection. Amen. When I saw that, all I heard all I heard in my spirit was, I'm with you. Amen. The promise. Amen. I'm with you. Thank you. My amen. promises are A and Amen. 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 When, I, when, I, when I saw that, it was, it was, I don't know which was salty, my tears or the ocean water. <laughs> I, I don't know. But it was, it was so emotional, so, so heartwarming and so encouraging for yeah. me. Yes. So it encouraged me so much seeing that covenant. My father, you know, he is willing to go, you know, uh, do anything and everything possible to give me an opportunity to rejoice. <coughs> there are many people at that same beach at the same time. For them, it may not mean anything. 
It may not mean anything, but for me, it meant much more. So that is why one of the things that I'm trying to go after today is what it means to you. You know, the same thing is happening all around us, but what does it mean to you is what I'm going after. So the title of my message today is Get a Grip. Get a Grip. Usually, you know, uh, when somebody, uh, hey, come here, I'm going to take, yeah, come here. <laughs> She's like, me? Yeah, come here. So usually, you know, she, she, she's a girl, but she can take it. So I'll, I'll use her as an example, right? When, especially when guys are talking to each other, when we are, when if we see somebody that is, that we know is supposed to stand and not standing and they are falling, what we do is we immediately hold them by the collar and say, get a grip, dude. <laughs> yes. so we shake them and try to make them realize that they are losing it. Amen? Thank you. <laughs> she did very good. So, um, what are we trying to do to them? We are trying to give them a thing that they are not seeing. You're not seeing what you're not seeing. Because you're too consumed with all the other stuff. You're, it is not like you for you to be here. You know, there are times, let me be very honest and blunt, there are times I had to slap my friends to give them that, that, that reality. They did that to me too, don't get me wrong. You know, it, it has come to the place where we have that, where we can tell each other, let us get back up, man. We can't stay here. If we stay here, if we continue to see it this way, we are not going anywhere. So we use that expression, get a grip. You know, women try to tell, the, uh, the mothers will try to tell the kids, uh, uh, when they have the kid, uh, uh, when they have their first child, the mother, mother's world is like, okay, I'm failing. Every mother's first idea is like, I'm a failure as a mother. But the grandmother sees it, get a grip, get a grip. Okay. This is not changing. Right. You know, you don't fall, just get back up. You need to see these things differently. Amen. So she tries to encourage her to see something the new mother is not seeing. Amen. So we use those kinds of things in many expressions in our life. Get a grip. Get a grip. Because you know things are going out of your control because, why? You lost the sight. Mm -hmm. It is not a problem of strength. It is a problem of sight. Mm -hmm. You're not seeing what you should see. So I'm going to give a couple of examples and then we will go to the uh, uh, place I believe it's going to be, be very helpful. Go with me to 1 Corinthians 4th chapter and 9th verse. 1 Corinthians 4th chapter and 9th verse. I'm reading this from the classic amplified version. It reads like this. For it seems to me that God has made an exhibit of us apostles exposing us to uh, a view last of all like men in triumphal procession who are sentenced to death and displayed at the end of the line. For we have become a spectacle to the world, a show in the world's amphitheater with, with both men and angels as spectators. Mm -hmm. Now, here, Paul is trying to present himself from his apostleship, this apostle uh, calling that he has. Because he has the calling, what is it? The people are seeing him as somebody who has been abused who have been betrayed, who have been gone through awful things in their life. But whereas Paul is presenting to them, I'm an apostle. Which means I have to go through this. So these are the two different worlds of the two different views that are going. On one side, the, the, the presentation was they are persecuted. On the other side, he is saying, I got to go through this. Which one is it? 
This is where you and me need to understand this dimension to get a grip. Which dimension are we going to look upon? Because it is easy for us to be carried away in persecution. You know, because the devil is good at showing what he wants to show. He always is good at presenting everything that you might feel good about it. True. <laughs> if you have the feeling, like, like so for example, if you have the feeling that you are lonely, he gives you every reason to amp that feeling. True. Amen. So that, that, that is the dimension that you and me need to understand. What is it that is coming? That's why many times when people try to show pity to me, I seldom side with them. Don't get me wrong, I need pity sometimes. I do. You know, we all do. No, we all need yes. that. But I don't want it all the time. Amen. I shouldn't be wanting it all the time. Because that is not taking me anywhere. Mm -hmm. But what we are creating for us is a reality that is not in a connection with God's reality. God was able to deliver Paul from many of his persecutions, all the troubles, even to the point of death, because he always assumed us apostleship. He always took up on that anointing, that mantle that was his. So in other words, he is only seeing things this is for me to go through. That's why he never stopped saying rejoice. And again I said rejoice. Because what he was going through did not change the definition of what God is doing. Or what God is wanting him to do. <coughs> So this is a very, very vital uh, 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 dissection, I like to say. We've got to be very careful because remember, the word of God is a double-edged sword. For what? For division. For division, you should be able to cut. You should be able to differentiate, okay, this slice is of God and this slice is of enemy. Okay. You will have to do that. If you, if you don't use the word of God to dissect it, all you have is you. You are becoming your own God. Amen. Do not let you be the judge of you. Amen. That is the worst place you can be. Because the judgment that you are incurring on yourself, God has to allow that judgment because he cannot move beyond what you sow. That's true. Amen. Mm -hmm. So that's why never try to even judge by you. Many times I feel like I need to be judged by the persecution I've been through. Because trust me, I've been through hell on earth. Not once, multiple times. There are times I went to places I knew there is a death threat for me. I still went there because the Lord wanted me to go. <coughs> That, that, that even in spite of knowing that I'm going to be ridiculed or I'm going to be mocked or I'm going to be put down, I still went into those things. But because the obedience of God doesn't stop when the circumstances are not lining up. That's where we have to move beyond the fact of looking at things from our dimensions. Paul was making it so clear. I'm, a pa I'm an apostle. Because I'm an apostle, I will be presented as an exhibit. Are you, are you with me here? Amen. So he is taking that place. He is assuming his role. I'm going to be an exhibit. So if I'm going to be an exhibit, somebody is going to poke me. Somebody is going to ridicule me. Some, you know, you saw exhibits in your life. Not every exhibit you saw, you never went. I mean, like, as a kid, I always liked going to museums. Even now, anytime if I go to any town, I like to see if they have any museums. I go check on them. One of my, part of my bucket list is to go to D.C. to check all the museums there. Yes. <laughs> because I want to see all the exhibits there. I want to see what it is, what's the history. So, 
as a kid I would go to these museums, I would see these swords, I would see these things that they are carrying for their wards or their shields or the utensils that were, they were using and sometimes I would go to these uh, 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 museums that are tribal. I go to those tribal uh, museums and, and the primitive tools that they are using. Oh, that's garbage. <laughs> you know, we, <laughs> for them that was livelihood. Amen. But for me, I, as soon as I, uh, <laughs> did they live with that? <laughs> you know? Let, let's be real. We did that. We do that. We do that. that what his apostle is saying there is, I am open for this. I am an exhibit. Some might look at me and think I'm a joker. He was fine with it. Some might think I'm a threat. And he was fine with it too. Because his position didn't change because of people's expectation. Just because I said that's garbage, that didn't stop being an exhibit. That's true. It continued to be an exhibit. So what I'm trying to say here is, well, let us figure out the way that we can see things through the constants, rather than moving this way or that way. Mm. Paul was able to finish his race because he was not double-minded. That's why he says, not that I have achieved it, but I press. His mission was always to press, to go there. Because he never tried to be something that he is not in Christ. He chose the path of constant. Now that, keep that in mind and as we go into this. 2 Kings chapter 6, starting at verse 8. <coughs> this is one of, one of the most amazing, amazing uh, incident that took place that really should ignite us to see things. To see things. Now the king of Syria was making war against Israel. I'm going to take a pause there and have to break down some things. What was king of Israel, the king of uh, Syria doing? He was making war. He was making war. He wasn't, he wasn't making friendship. He was making war. In other words, many times we don't understand it is war. Mm -hmm. Christians, especially, we don't understand war. We have been taught so much about to love your neighbor, we forget there is a part of it is war. Mm -hmm. War is still there. What is war? If we don't understand what is war, we might end up, uh, end up losing our battle. Mm -hmm. What the Syrian army or, or the Syrian people are doing is not a friendly relationship. It's a war. When we don't see war as war, like say for example right now, there's a lot of war going on all around us, which has nothing to do with the bullet. Amen. That's true. Has nothing to do with a bullet and a gun. No. Oh. Yet it is a war. Amen. There is an information war that happens. There is a political war that happens. There is a, a, a news media war that happens. There is a conspiracy war that happens. There are so many wars that are happening right around us. And about everything, one of the biggest threats that we face as a society is cyber war. A lot of us, we don't even have a clue what is ransomware. Mm -hmm. Every single day, there are many communities, with, uh, even counties that I know pay millions of dollars to get the release of their software. Mm -hmm. Because it has been hacked. Mm -hmm. Now look at this. Let me ask you this. What will you do with the bullet to that war? Mm -hmm. Somebody put a malware in your software and they are controlling you. What will you do with a gun and a bullet? Nothing. Mm -hmm. Are you with me here? Yes. Because it's a cyber war. Mm -hmm. When it is a cyber war, you engage in the cyber war with the cyber weapons. Mm -hmm. Not with guns and bullets. Right. Are you with me here? Yes. yes. <coughs> 
So, so uh, on the other side, we, have, we, we need to understand many times, we don't understand the war. What type of a war? When you understand there is war, then what type of a war? And that was one of the biggest advantages uh, uh, we had America as a nation when it was finding, fighting its uh, revolutionary war. The type of war, the guerrilla warfare, the, 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 the militia chose was so uh, alien for the Brits. They don't know that warfare. Mm -hmm. All they know is march in front of each other, let's hit each other. Whoever lives longer, they are the winners. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the war they knew. But here, the militia invented a different war strategy. Mm -hmm. They have come up with a war strategy because their resources were not as strong as the opposition. But they went to the war with a different dimension, and because of that, what happened? They won the war. So this is something you and me, we, we need to understand. What, when, when we understand war, we also need to question what type of a war. What type of a war? See, if something is happening as an information war, it doesn't make any difference if you talk about any other things other than counter it with information. The war is with information. So you have to counter it with information. That, that many times, that's why I, I, I don't understand. Many times, when the war is spiritual, you try to counter it with emotion. How will you win that battle? Let me tell you, if nobody told you this, you will not. You will not. This is where I want you to understand. Why, why in the world I don't have this happen to me? You can cry all emotional that you want. But there is a spiritual warfare happening. If you want to engage in the spiritual warfare, attack it spiritually, not emotionally. Amen. 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 That's one thing. You know, uh, 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 then who are they waging the war against matters the most. Syrians may have waged war, as, as a matter of fact, they waged wars with many nations. All around the world, they waged wars. And they won. The commander for them is the Naaman. He won many wars. Just a few chapters before this, we talk about how God healed Naaman, the commander of Syrian army. So, war is not new for them, or war is not unlike Syrians. But the problem comes here is they are at war with whom? With Israel. Now Israel has a covenant with God. Amen. That's where the things change. Amen. Whom are we in war with? Makes all the difference. Yes. David had the clarity from the first day on. That's why he sees the Philistine and he says, you uncircumcised Philistine. What is he saying? He doesn't have God covenant. God is not backing that person. I got the backing of the Lord. I don't have the sword. I don't have the javelin. I don't have all those things. But I do have the Lord with me. So here, the Syrians are trying to war against Israel. Maybe this same plague, maybe the same plague could go and touch all these other ten people, but you, are you with me here? When it is trying to attack you, that's a different story. That's a totally different story because you are in covenant with the Most High. Amen. That changes the dimensions. You could have won against Susie, you could have won against Adam, you could have won against Mary, but not against me because I have a covenant with the Lord. Amen. That's why the scripture that we declare, a thousand may fall at my side and ten thousand to my right hand, it shall not come near me. Amen. And, and here, what matters is Israel. That's what matters. Yeah. If it wasn't the case, we wouldn't have this story talking about. Mm -hmm. Bible didn't talk about all the wars of Syrians. They didn't care for it. 
But when it came to Israel, it matters. When it comes to God's covenant, it matters. And he consulted with his servant saying, my camp will be in such and such a place. And the man of God sent to the king Israel saying, beware that you do not pass this place for the Syrians are coming down there. If you carefully observe, this is, has got nothing to do with the, with the physical intel. This, there is no physical intel here. There were no spies here. There were no spies here. Are you with me here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What is here is the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. sure. Syrians were talking in their inner chambers and they are trying to constitute a war. And when they are building a war, they are strategizing a war, the Lord reveals the strategy to this guy who is a prophet. He's not even a warmonger. He's not even a warlord. He is not. But the Lord reveals it to the Prophet. Because his spirit is in tune with God. Now the information is coming to him. So he reveals that information. So he, 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 he goes to the king of Israel and saying, Beware that you do not pass this place, for the Syrians are coming down there. What an advantage. What an advantage. You need to understand your advantage. Otherwise, your disadvantages will drown you. Imagine the king of Israel not knowing this information. He can be smitten easily. The kingdom of Israel, you, you go to the next chapter, you will see the great famine that happens to the kingdom of Israel. In overnight, you can just, they, they besiege the whole nation. Because they are so weak. I want you to understand this. Not because Israel was strong, but the one who has a covenant with Israel is strong. Amen. Then the king of Israel sent someone to the place which the man of God had told. Thus he warned him and he was watchful there, not just once or twice. He was able to confirm. That, that is what is happening. So in other words, wherever the enemy is trying to attack you, God has an attack strategy. Amen. God has an attack strategy. Don't be foolish not to understand attacks. Mm. Warfare requires attack strategy. Don't just walk into it blindly. Maybe you are well trained with guns. Maybe you are well trained with the armor. Maybe you are all that. But again, when it comes to war, war doesn't is not won with the guns and bullets. It's won with strategy. Okay. It's the strategy. Can we say that? It's the strategy. It's strategy. Come on, church. It's, it's the strategy. strategy. That is what matters. If you want to win a war, strategy matters. The Lord was revealing a strategy to him above their strategy. Their strategy was based on intelligence. His strategy was purely spiritual. He's giving things to them in the spirit. Thank you, Jesus. He's giving the information in the spirit. Bam, 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 bam. That's why I tell you again and again, your spirit is more advantageous than your intelligence. True. You have better advantage if your spirit is tuned with the Holy Spirit than your mind with a lot of knowledge. Amen. Now therefore the heart of king of Syria was greatly troubled by this thing. Can I say the king of Syria was annoyed? Frustrated? Irritated? Because he, died, he tried strike one, didn't work. Strike two didn't work. Now he is furious. Any strike I, I have given them, that I'm not able to capture them. I'm not able to cover them. I'm not able to take over them. Mm -hmm. So he now what happens, he called his servants and said to them, will you not show me which of us uh, is for the king of Israel? So now he starts doubting the people that are with him. Somebody is spying on him. Somebody is giving information out. There is a mole inside. One of his servants said, 
none, my Lord, O king. But Elisha, the prophet, who is in Israel, tells the king of Israel the words that you speak in your bedroom. Come on, y'all. <laughs> that is your advantage. Amen. What the enemy might be conspiring in their bedroom, you can hear it. Because of the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. Because of the Spirit of God. That is your advantage. That is your hearing. That is your seeing. That makes a difference. That's why the Bible says, Hearing ear and the seeing eye is made of the Lord. Amen. Is of the Lord. Amen. You're trying to use all the other senses that, that you have. But I'm here to challenge you. There are better senses for you that you are not using. The senses of your spirit, where you can see in your spirit, where you can hear in your spirit. Yeah. If you try to hear in your mind, you know what you get? Depression. <laughs> Very simple. Don't try to hear in your mind, hear in your heart. Yes. As a man who have gone through so many warfares in my life, literally, to the point of death. I barely just, I, I almost touched death, death and came out many times, not once. Not for my foolishness, but because I chose the cross. Okay. I'm saying these things from that experience. Every time I'm in a warfare, I'm not asking God for victory. Mm -hmm. Victory is a guarantee. Mm -hmm. Victory is a guarantee. Come on, church. Victory is a guarantee. You are on the winning side. He is the winner. There is no, no doubt about it. But what is that that you and me need to seek is the strategy. What is the strategy, Lord? How will I go from point A to point B? I know B is my victory. How can I walk there? Lead me there. That is what you and me as a Christian ought to seek. Whenever you are in a war. First thing, don't ignore a war. Don't think of war as nothing. That is, many times, even if you see it as a nation right now, people don't understand war. That's why they side with the enemy. There are many of our brothers and sisters, they side with their enemy because they don't see the enemy as the enemy of war. Yeah. Okay. That is the same problem Israelites have gone through. They did not treat the enemies as enemies, and then they got married with them, and then what happened? The nation became idol worshippers, and destruction came Amen. upon them. True. Amen. There is a reason for you and me to draw the line. The season that I am in, personally for me, is where I need to be very clear with drawing the lines. Amen. I have to be very strict with drawing the lines. You're on that side, I'm on this side. That's why many people are trying to build the, the gaps, are trying to do the unification of the things. Life and death has nothing in common. Amen. What, do, what are you fighting for? Let, let us find a common ground. One for, person wants life, one person wants death. Where is the common ground for it? Explain it to me. So we have to come to the place where we can draw the line and be okay with it. Amen. Let me tell you something. Drawing the line is not that easy. It is not. That's true. But Amen. it is necessary. Yes. Yes. It is necessary. When we don't learn or when we don't give our heart to draw the lines, you will be the one who is losing. That's true. Amen. So he said, God, uh, go and see where he is. Now the attack is going to the man of God. Many times don't, we, 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 we think, oh, I'm just, I'm just a poor minister. Let me tell you something. If you are waging the real spiritual war, you will be attacked. That is true. You Amen. will be attacked. Mm -hmm. Amen. There is no doubt about it. The, as a matter of fact, he wants to kill him. The whole Syrian army trying to kill one, what we consider a poor prophet. It's not even a fair battle. 
Amen? Amen. Yet he was pushed into it. Because he never, well, Elisha was not somebody who waged war with, with swords. Uh, uh, then, then he goes on. So, so he said, uh, the, uh, uh, and it was told to him, saying, surely he is in Dothan. Therefore he sent horses and chariots and a great army there. And they came by night and surrounded the city. Whole city is surrounded. And when the servant of the man of God arose early and went out, there was an army. Surrounded the city with horses and chariots. And his servant said to him, Alas, my master, what shall we do? What shall we do? And he answered, Do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. If I was there, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> there are horses, there are chariots all around me, and you are saying you and me are more than them? This is not Jonathan and his armor bearers fighting. We are prophets. He just prophesied. We don't even know how to wield a sword. <laughs> what are you talking about? But the thing is, the man of God understood the war is not with the horses and chariots. Amen. He understood the war. He understood his advantage, his ground of advantage. What is your ground of advantage? You need to understand that. You know, when a, when a crocodile is in the water, it is the strongest. If you ever want to kill it, if you bring it to the dry land, you have better chances. Okay. <laughs> Are you with me here? Yes. So that's where we have to understand what is your swamp. Mm -hmm. When the gators are in the swamp, it is their turf. What is your turf? When we don't understand our turf, our home ground, we are always losing our battle. If you ever want to win in your, in your battles, bring the enemy to your turf. Are you with me here? Amen. Yes. Do not fear. See, first thing what he says, do not fear. Because fear always is a disadvantage for you. Yeah. It always sets you in a place where you will lose. Mm -hmm. Do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Mm -hmm. Elisha prayed, and Elisha prayed and saw, said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. Mm -hmm. Now my other question. you got to be kidding me. <laughs> I thought I saw the army. You're saying I still didn't see something? See, this is where, this is what I am trying to go after. The thin layers. Where Apostle Paul was presenting to us, I am an exhibit. But whereas what we are seeing is his persecution. Mm -hmm. Are you with me here? Mm -hmm. That is the gap every Christian has to struggle with. That is the gap where Christian has to build how we can see something that is not being presented by the devil. The devil is always trying to present to you some things and there is something God is trying to present to you. Which one are you going to see? Which things are you going to watch? There is a famine that you can see, but if you are a Joseph, you know how to build a storehouse. Which one are you going to see? Are you going to be worried about the, the, the inevitable famine? Or are you going to be the Joseph who builds the storehouses? Amen. Are you with me here? Mm -hmm. Church, the time has come for us to be real. Mm. You know, we talk about all of these things. Oh, real church, real church. Let me tell you something. Real church is not somebody who talks about their, their, their pains and weaknesses. That is not real. The real church is when you can walk like Christ. Amen. That is real. Talking about your pain, talking because you got abused, or talking about those things, I'm not condemning those things. That is half of the reality. Mm -hmm. 
The true reality is if you can walk like Christ. That is real. That is the real church. I'm not asking you to hide your emotions. I'm not asking you to hide your hurt. Or I'm not asking all those things. But uh, what I'm saying is let us be real. Which is let us be spiritual. Amen. That is your reality. You know you're going to be continuing in your life in which realm? Your eternity is in which realm? Spirit realm. Yes. If your eternity is in spirit realm, what is more real? Which thing is more real? Think about that. Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. Then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, glory be to God. Behold, the mountains was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. You think you got outnumbered. The truth is, they are outnumbered. Amen. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. They are outnumbered, not us. Might look like it. It looks like it every instance you go into a warfare. You are outnumbered. You are in a disadvantageous place. You feel like you are losing. You feel like you are being choked. <coughs> but let me tell you something. If there is one brother who is willing to agree with you, you got the greatest strength. Where two or three who can agree upon this earth, Two or three. Glory be to God in heaven. Yes. That's what I always look for whenever I go to the battle. Can you be my head? Can you be somebody who can touch me? Can you be somebody who can agree? I don't do everything right. I don't, I'm don't. i not fixing or I'm not trying to do everything right. But I can need somebody by my side. Because you know what? We're going to bring this giant down. Amen. Amen. We're bringing this giant down. Come with me. If you want to prosper as a church, learn how to get along. Amen. Learn how to walk in this battle together. Amen. That is the most important requirement for a church. You don't go through your battle by yourself. We go through it. Amen. We go through things together. Yes. The devil always tries to create the division. That one accord is always disturbed. Mm -hmm. That is exactly what he wants because that is his turf. Right. Division is his turf. Amen. One accord is our turf. Thank God if you have one person agreeing with you. I thank God for my, now, right now, in the battle that I am going through, I thank God for all of you that are in agreement with me. I am so thankful because I have my people. I am not alone in this battle. I can go in this battle with all of you. That's why I say I have greater advantage. I have a greater advantage. Yes. Now behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. So when the Syrians came down to him, Elisha prayed to the Lord and said, Strike these people. I pray with blindness. You know, blindness is a disease. I'm going to leave you with that. <laughs> you know, what, what, what was Paul telling us to pray for when, some, when we are praying for sinners? That they may see. I'm going to leave you with that. <laughs> and he struck them with blindness according to the word of Elisha. According to the word of, word of Elisha. As a matter of fact, blindness is a spiritual disease. Okay. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, many of us have the disease. Because mm, yeah. we are too stuck in our natural sight that we are not seeing the spiritual way. Okay. okay. As a matter of fact, that is one of the biggest diseases for church right now. Mm -hmm. Not being able to see. Not being able to see. The Lord is stirring me up again and again. I need my church to see. I need my church 
to see. I need my church to see. And I, I want them to see. Yes. Let us be those Elishas that can see the chariots going up. Let us be those Elishas. Elisha is not in this place because he was Elijah's disciple. No, he pushed himself to that. He pushed himself to that. He gave birth to him. Okay. Jesus did the same thing. He gave birth to him. Everybody labeled him as the carpenter's son, but he said, I'm the son of God. Amen. Everybody labeled him as one of the Jews. And everybody labeled him, you're a prophet. Mm -hmm. But he's like, I'm the lamb that takes the sin away. Mm -hmm. hey, thank you, Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Lord. And then now Elisha said to them, this is not the way, nor is the sin. Follow me, I will bring you to the man whom you seek. But he led them to Samaria. And so it was when they had come to Samaria that Elisha said, Lord, open the eyes of these men. That they may see. Who has greater power here? The Syrian army or one this old dude, Elisha? Elisha. Come on, church. Let us be bold. Let us be bold about our gift. Yes. The gift that God has put in us is greater than you know. Yes. You're not using that gift. God has given that gift to you as your advantage. As your radar, as your, uh, as your receiver, as your responder, as your warfare weapons. The gift that he has put in you the day you got born again. Amen. The day you received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. That's the day he implanted that in us along with his Holy Spirit. Amen. What was Elisha doing? He's operating in his gift. I'm here to challenge every believer. Quit operating in your intelligence and start operating in your gift. As someone who have won many warfares in my life, I tell you, never was my physical advantageous to me more than my spiritual. Mm, okay. I used all the physical resources that I had at my dispense, but it was always the spirit gift that gave me the advantage. Yeah. Lord, open the eyes of those men that they may see. And the Lord opened their eyes and they saw. And that they were, in, and they were inside Samaria. Mm. Now you need to understand also when you know this is an enemy, you have a different kind of power. Mm. Look at God responding to Elisha. Elisha said, Lord, close their eyes. He did. Mm. Lord, open their eyes. He did. Mm. You think Elisha is special? No, no, no. He understood warfare. He understood war. And he understood covenant. That's why he's like when he went, Lord, I am your anointed. Your word says, touch not my anointed. Look at this enemy who is trying to touch me. This cancer enemy that is trying to touch me. I declare a war against it. Cancer, be dead. Yes. All right. Come on. Are you with me here? Yes. yes. Damn. Kill this cancer, Lord. Yeah. Okay. He's on the mission. Yeah. He's got a radiation that you and me doesn't know. That could kill every stupid cell. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So he goes and he opens the eyes. Now when the king of Israel saw them, he said to Elisha, My father, shall I kill them? Shall I kill them? Then he answered, You shall not kill them. Would you kill those who have taken captive with your sword and your bar? Set food and water before them, that they may eat and drink and go to their master. Then he prepared a great feast for them. And after they ate and drank, he sat them away and they went to their master. So the bands of Syrian raiders came no more into the land of Israel. Yeah. What did he do? He bought peace. He bought peace. Colossians 2nd chapter, starting at 18th verse. Let no one cheat you of your reward. Church, let no one cheat you of your reward. 
Why? How can you be cheated? Taking delight in false humility and worship of angels, intruding into those things which has which he has not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind, and not holding fast to the head, from whom all the body nourished and knit together by joints and ligaments, grows with the increase that is from God. Therefore, if you died with Christ, for the, from the basic principles of the world. Why as though living in the world do you subject yourself to regulations? Regulations of the world, the orders of the world, the limitations of the world, the subjugations of the world, the physical possibilities and impossibilities. That is what we are still pondering on. When God says, I have made you a new creation. Amen. I have given you a new spirit. I have given you a new dimension. Do not touch, do not taste, do not handle, which all concern things which perish with the using according to the commandments and doctrines of men. These things indeed have an, look at this, these things indeed have an appearance of wisdom. An appearance of wisdom. Come on church. That should be a breakthrough for us. What appears to be wisdom is not wisdom. In self-imposed religion, false humility. Look, God has a beef with false humility. Big time beef. So don't try to say, I'm being humble when you say, God, I don't even deserve this, God. Many times, oh, I'm a wretch. I'm a sinner saved by grace. You think you're being humble? No, you're being arrogant. That's false humility. That's true. Amen. When God himself said, you are my son and you are my daughter. Come boldly to the throne room of grace. No, Lord, I'm a sinner. No, you're not being humble. You're not yes. being humble. No, you're not. Come on now. You're being very prideful. <laughs> Very, very prideful. Christian, if you are struggling with death, let me tell you something. Let this be the day of freedom. Amen. God said, you are my son. What do you say? I am your son. God said, you are my righteousness. What do you say? I am your righteousness. God said, let there be light. What was it? Light. And if God said, I am the righteousness, what am I? I am the righteousness. Simple. Amen. Simple. Amen. Self-imposed religion, false humility, and neglect the body, but are of no value against the indulgence of the flesh. If you are raised with Christ, are you raised with Christ? Yes. yes. I'm going to the third chapter, start for, we're starting at verse 1. Are you raised with Christ? Come on, church. Amen. Come on, church. Are you raised with Christ? Yes. If you have been resurrected with Christ, which is when you got born again. Amen. If you have given your life to Christ, not because you went to church. But because you gave your heart to Christ. Lord, I need you to be my Lord. I'm a sinner. Forgive me. Give me your righteousness. Give me the deliverance. Give me your, your, pro, your provision. Your place. I want that. A simple exchange with the Lord. When you had that. Seek those things which are above. Amen. That is the problem many times. We are still you know, even though you got promoted, you still prefer a pig, pig, pig's pen. Even though you got promoted to the palace, you're like, oh, let me go back to my pen. <laughs> I kind of gotten used to the filth. Let me, let me wallow it. Let me sit in there. Let me get that mud on me. Mud on your face. <laughs> Big disgrace. <laughs> been lifted up into Christ in Christ we have been promoted to that place when we have been promoted to that place where do we live we live in that place yes that's why he says seek the things above seek the things which are above where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God amen set your mind on the things above not on the things of the earth 
this is the transition God is asking. As a matter of fact, God is demanding of us. This is an hour for us to be able to see the unseen. To be able to see what God is doing. God is trying, encouraging me, and even commanding me to tell his church, the church, it is time that we you start opening your eyes. Yeah. Ask God, God, can I see what you're doing? Yes. If you are still struggling, God, uh, can I see what, you're, what you are doing, Lord? Let me see that. Let me not miss it. Whether it is glory or whether it is something else, let me see what you are doing, Father. Yes. Amen. That is why he gave you the eyes to see. Set your mind. If your mind is still on the earthly things, you cannot see them. Set your mind on the things above. Amen. Set your mind on the things Amen. above. Amen. Let the mind be renewed, processed so much that it is willing to see. Oh yeah, I see the glory of God. I see an angel traveling around. You know, we don't even, we are so spooked thinking that, oh, the angel showed up. Oh, oh no, he might be telling a story. <laughs> Bible is full of such things? Yes. Let me tell you something. Your warfare right now is not because of, not with your strength. I mean, it's the angelic host that is going to fight for you. Amen. If you can't even recognize them, what will you do? Amen. What will you do? Yes. Come on, church. Let's get acclimated. Let us become real. Yes. This is reality. This is Christian reality. This is biblical reality. Angels being around you. That's a biblical reality. The spirit of the Lord living in you. That's a biblical reality. The spirit of the Lord leading you. That's a biblical reality. You being able to discern him among the spirit. That's a spiritual reality. Let us live in the reality. Amen. Amen. Set your mind on the things about not on the things on the earth. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Amen. When Christ who is our life appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Where do you belong? In his glory. In his glory. In his glory. Mark 2.22. Let me tell you this thing. Let me tell you. Let me end there. Mark 2.22. And no one puts new wine into the old wine skins. Let me tell you, if nobody told you this, your mind is your wineskin. Your mind is your wineskin. Since your mind is not renewed, the newness of whatever God is trying to bring into you, the new wine, doesn't make any sense. It won't even stand there. Because the wineskin is not ready. That's why the mind has to be prepared. Set your mind, uh, Bible. That's why Paul even says it in Romans 12 where he says, Renew your mind. Yeah. Yes. But be it transformed by the renewing of your mind. Yes, hallelujah. Let that wineskin change. Mm. Don't be acclimated so much with your old, old ways, old ways, and be stuck in there. I think this is where I feel like the Lord is rebuking us. How long? For how long are you going to be with that old wine skin? For how long? Hallelujah. I need you now. Yes. You want the Lord to come? He needs you now. You better get yourself the new wine skin. You better, better get yourself to get your mind, set your mind on the things about. Otherwise, you cannot protect you. You cannot protect your family. Moreover, you cannot protect this nation. This nation needs somebody who can see in the spirit, not in the physical. Yeah. We should be able to go beyond. Yeah. Okay. No one puts new wine in the old wine skin, or else new one bursts the wine skins and the wine is spilled. Wine becomes of no use because your wine skin is not ready. Yeah. Think about that. But new wine must be put into new wine skins. Amen. He says no one does that. What does, it, what does it imply? When Jesus says something, it implies so much. You need to understand that. Jesus is the one said, let there be light. And there was light. Mm -hmm. 
But he says, no one will put it. What you'll say, no one will put it. I'm not that guy. I'm not that guy that is going to pour new wine into the old wine skins. I'm lining up right now to have my new wine skin. Amen. Are you with me? Yes. The darkness lined up to give light way to the light. And he said, let there be light, right? Mm -hmm. So why can't we line up? I'm, I'm renewing my mind today, Lord. I receive the renewing of my mind today. I receive the mind of Christ today. I receive to yeah. think at the way you think. Yeah. I am thinking the way you are thinking. Amen. This is appropriating what God has given. I have the mind of Christ. Come on, church. Let us shout it. I have the mind of Christ. Come on, church. I have the mind of Christ. Woo. We don't think like us. We think like him. Amen. Okay, man. In a war against whom matters. Against whom matters. I'm ending with my statements. Every single day the politicians are trying to instigate wars. Instigate wars, 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 wars. Against whom? Against whom? We need to know that. We need to know that. Against whom? Because you don't even know you are engaging in a war that is against you. You're trying to engage in wars that are against us. Yeah. You don't even recognize those things. We are not recognizing those things. That's why you got to be careful. Does, does God take sides in a war? Yes. You always think, oh, God is impartial. That doesn't mean he doesn't take exactly. sides. Yes, he is. He is impartial. He always stands on the right. Amen. If you are on the right, stand with the right. Yes. Amen. Yes. If you are in the right, I'm not talking politically. Mm -hmm. I'm just talking scripturally Amen. and spiritually. If you are on the right, God stands with you. Amen. He takes the side, Amen. his side. Amen. So you be best come to his side. Yes. That's true. I don't want any other advantage but his advantage. Yes. If God be for us, so, come be yes. us. so yes, yeah. God takes sides, his side. Yeah. He takes his side. So we get all and go on to his side. That's why my loyalty is to no political party. I don't, I'm not loyal to any political party, but I am loyal to righteousness. My Amen. God. Amen. If any political party lines up with them, you got me. Yeah. You don't need to sell your candidate to me. You just need to sell me your policies. Okay. What are your policies? Do they honor God's will? Yeah. Amen. Amen. God's will. Let me ask, tell you something. They don't hate you, but the gift of God that is in you. True. Amen. They don't hate you. They hate the gift of God That's that is in you. Mm -hmm. So it is important you continue to live in your gift. Amen. All right. You know why? If you don't continue in your gift, you are disadvantages. You lose your advantage. When you lose your advantage, you think the hatred will stop? No. That's why it's important for us as Christians that live in this nation, we continue to uplift this nation and proclaim the love of God over this nation because the hatred is not going to stop because you stop being that gifted nation. That's true. The true strength of this nation is in God we trust. One nation under God. That is the true, true strength of this nation. Amen. If that is not the case, we will lose our identity. Many people try to run to the Constitution. Let me tell you something. Constitution is not Bible. Constitution only protects us with God-given rights. They don't give you a jack squat. Mm -hmm. Amen. Nothing. They only give, they only protect what God has given to us. But anyway. <laughs> uh, let me repeat that. They don't hate you, but the gift of God that is in you. So it is important you continue to live in your gift. The Lord, this is what the prophecy that the Lord has given. The Lord is saying, I'm doing a new thing. Are you still stuck in your old self? As a matter of fact, he is saying to many of us, you are still stuck in your old self. I need you to get out. A new chapter has begun. This is what the Lord is saying. A new chapter has begun. Spiritually, financially, economic system, advantage system. A new chapter has begun. Amen. 
Amen. This is what the Lord is saying. Amen. A new chapter. I was so surprised. Economic system. He is creating a new economic system. Hallelujah. All right. Y'all better be prepared for that. Is it crypto? Is it this? Is it that? I'm not here to argue all those things. Do it by faith. Amen. Okay. The system that can be run by faith. Mm -hmm. Think about that. You can instigate it. Mm -hmm. You can initiate it. Do it by faith. An advantage system. There was an elite system. There is still an elite system. The Lord is telling, I am building, I have started a new advantage system. Do you want to take advantage of the advantage system? Yes. Flow with them. Flow with them. You can have that advantage. That's what he says. The first shall be the last and the last shall be the first. That is where God is flipping the scripts, flipping the tables. The system has begun. He needs somebody who can see and take advantage of it. So the stay, uh, the, uh, this is where I will end. Put on the new nature of Jesus that is in you. Put on. Put it on. It is not going to fall on you. You need to put it on. Put it on. Okay. Put it on the new nature. I'm a new creation. I'm a new person. I'm a new one in, in Christ. I'm going to think like Christ. I'm going to live like Christ. Even though I may be in the world. But I'm not of this world. I'm not going to do the way the world has to do. I will do the way the Lord has to be doing. That is the system God is calling us into. Amen. I encourage you everyone. And not only that. I even go further as a pastor of you. That loves you dearly. That loves you with all of my heart. I'm not a selfish one. If I go there, I want you to come with me. Amen. Amen. This is what the Lord is revealing. This is what the Lord is saying. That He is doing this new thing. Amen. He wants us to be with Him. Mm -hmm. The most important thing is, let us see it. Let us see it. We need to see what the Lord is showing. We need to see what, what He is trying to do in us, through us, and for us. Yes. Amen. We need to see. Yes. And hour, the hour has come for us to see what he is showing. Yes. Maybe we are too stuck in the army that is surrounding us. But I want you to understand there is a greater army that is surrounding you. Hallelujah. Understand the war. Understand the war strategy and take advantage. Walk in the path of advantage. May the Lord enrich you with his blessings. May the Lord enrich you with his wisdom. May the Lord enrich you with favor that you have never seen before. Amen. The things that are coming upon you, you have never seen. Why? God, why? Yes, because you fell on this side. You started seeing. That's why God is adding. Amen. Amen. Get ready. This is not over yet. Before this year is over, I know this thing. Before November of this year, there are new things that are going to come into your life. Yeah. Don't be stuck in your old ways. Don't be stuck in your old wine skin so that you may have the newness of what God has yeah. ordained. Impossible is becoming possible. Amen. Amen. Get used to it. Get ready for it. Imply your, position yourself for it so God may prosper you. Amen? Amen. You got something from this? Yes. Give God some glory. Give God some glory. Amen. Amen. Let us end the service with our confession. Three, two, one. We are Covenant Fusion Church. We are a body of believers. We are blessed to be a blessing. And we are filled for His glory. Amen. God bless you. We love you.